Yep, I've got my beverage. All right. And we are recording. Yep, looks good. All right. <laughs> Intro. Hey, listeners, we are back <laughs> with with another late night improvisational uh, bullshit video that we're going to try to recall the past two days. Hey, Scott, you yeah. look really tired. Do I? You yeah. Know, yeah. Let me know in the com. Tired. Let me know in the comments if I look really tired. Post down below. Yeah. You know, just you know, be nice. So, uh, yeah, Don't we're we're, be nice. we're we're here with another uh, two day recap of uh, Gen Con here at the uh, Casa de la British. Mm. Wasn't it a uh, UK? Cottage? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Hi, Neve. We're here at the, we're here at the Gen Con Cottage. 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 Hello, hello, hello. What's all this thing? Oh God. That's just for you. <laughs> ha. All right. Um, so we're we're back with. Uh, so we did the last one. We did was day zero, day one. Day zero, day one. We're gonna do day two and day three. Oh my God. Talk about what we did what we did and what we didn't do. So, so what did we do on day two? Day two started off with. A bit of a, um, well, like all days start. They start off with like a lot of good intentions, but things change over the course of the day. <laughs> yeah. Like they tend to do with anyone who's ever been to any convention. That's just, you know, part for the course. Fact. So we started off day two, uh, you know, you know, after we all got ready and went to the con. And we did, went to, what was the first thing we, we did? We started with the consignment. Consignment, so, Yeah, yes. that was Friday. Day two was Friday. We, I got everybody rounded up early because I wanted, I had made booked my time to go to the consignment right. store, the bring and buy, whatever you want to call it. Right. And they had moved it from, we were here two years ago. It was right across the hall from the main vendor hall. Mm -hmm. And this year it was in the downtown Marriott. Right. Second floor, much expanded, probably twice the size. Twice the size and, and a far less weight. I mean, there were, there was, yeah. a, we maybe waited a total of maybe 30 minutes at the 30 most. 30 or 40 minutes total. I think the last uh, right. last time we were here, we probably waited an hour right. and a half. Right. Um, so kudos to the staff for moving to a larger mm -hmm. location, moving people through. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't actually, I mean, there was tons and tons of RPG stuff. There's a, some really good stuff, yeah. some really crap stuff. A lot of repeats, you know, a lot of stuff that you would typically find. Like there was no shortage of, Isle of Dread, a lot of old uh, a, you know, D&D and AD&D yeah. modules. Typical stuff that you would find kind of most anywhere. What I saw this year, though, that I, we didn't see two years ago was a lot of uh, 3.5 stuff. Yeah, there was a ton of 3.5 yeah. stuff. Which was kind of surprising. And, and 4.0. Yeah, uh, yeah, fair. I mean, but there was a good mix. There was, there was a lot of, um, uh, there was some, you know, sci-fi flair, you know, a, a ton of Shadowrun, mm -hmm. which there's no shortage yeah. Of people selling tons Shadow of Dragon, Run. tons of Dungeon Magazine. Not not older, not real old issues, but more uh, mid series and near later. the end of the run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did find the only <laughs> white dwarf, white dwarf uh, in the mix. I'm not going to find it, but it's here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I mean there was some um, you know Dark Sun modules. It was quite a bit of Dark Sun. Uh, but you know there really some, wasn't some Forgotten Realms box sets. A, a few of them, yeah. That yeah. were. Uh, no sales in the auction, but you know you 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 pick these things up right, and um, you you flip them over. And for those who aren't familiar with how it works here at Gen Con, it's a three day cycle, right? So there's yes, there's two ways you can end up in the consignment store. First is straight to consignment. It's three day three day options. There's a Friday or a Thursday price, a Friday price, and a Saturday price. And each day it's yeah. marked down um, with with very few exceptions to that that standard uh, scheme. Right. Then there's things that end up in the auction. And mm -hmm. if there's a no sale in the auction, they go over to the consignment store. The labeling is marked no sale. It's stamped no sale. Mm -hmm. And it has a reserve price on it. So one of the, a lot of the Forgotten Realms box sets that we saw had like a $75 uh, reserve price on it. They were no sales. Mm -hmm. So that obviously tells you at the auction, nobody wanted to pay the minimum, right. offer the minimum bid of right. $75. Chances are they weren't going to sell at the at that minimum reserve price right. or minimum buy price at seventy five dollars in the consignment store. Right. I wasn't paying it. No, and then there will be a mad dash on the last day for people to grab it for like twenty five bucks. Well, so those ones <clears throat> with the reserve price on them, those prices don't lower. No, those don't. But those the don't. other ones, all the other ones that have the the three day tier the, the tiered pricing, yes, yeah, people will go tomorrow on mm -hmm. Sunday because obviously we're recording this on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. We'll go tomorrow and stand in line and try to 
get the get some deals. And these actually, are the, you know what? Huh. It's the third Thursday, Friday, Saturday price. It may be the yeah. last day. Today was the last day. Oh well. Oh, well. Yeah, today but was but the last day, day are, are those who are actually looking to buy these things, and they're going to throw. <laughs> they're going to resell. They're going to throw up on. I right? was watching people when we were there on Friday. Yeah. You know, which is day two of the consignment shop. Um, looking at resell, you know, pr uh, active pricing and active selling lists mm -hmm. to see what pricing was, and they were they were buying to resell. Right. Right. And and real quick before we continue, because there there may be some comments from some of, some of our friends. One, this is an impromptu setup. You may see some glare see, around. Right right also, up. also haloing uh, the, or shadowing the sides of my yeah, head. Look at that. Yeah, you it's know, great. It's glow. In, you look angelic. Oh you know, yeah. You you are ascending. And also the sound again may not be so great. So uh, this is a, this is a special shout out to Nathan from the AARPGs, who is a soundophile. How would you say someone who audio just file? audio file? Yes. So yes, I know you're cringing, but you know, hey, this it's late. I don't feel like dealing with any of that nonsense. So carry on. Okay. So consignment. So I bought nothing. <laughs> I spent 25, 20, 25 minutes in the consignment shop. I had one book in my hand. I was like, I, I got, got the PDF. I put it back and I left. I got the D twenty version of um, what's the D twenty Elric? Uh, something of Melnabone, Dragons of uh, Melnabone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at it. I was like, nah. Yeah, it was worth it. It was like ten bucks, and and, yeah, I, and I and I grabbed the white dwarf. It was like five bucks. It was the okay. only one there, but you know, nothing. Nothing said, buy me, take me home, and care for me. Yeah. So, yep. Um. So we finished that, and then we went to did some vendor hall, did some yeah. schmoozing at the vendor hall, yes. and talked to some publishers, and um, you know, kind of did the the press thing and mm -hmm. talked to folks and. Got some inside scoop on some things, mm -hmm. and we were scheduled for a game that afternoon. Yes, uh, what later game? that afternoon. What um, game? I got to think about this for a second. God, uh, I, I haven't slept much since uh, yeah, we started what did, this. What, whole what, trip. Did we, what did we blow off? We blew off. Oh, uh, Roseville Beach. Moonlight on Roseville Beach with yeah. the game designer, which I'm still kind of really bummed about because I'm the one that wanted us to play that game. And yeah. I have the game, and I've read it, and I'm, I was really intrigued to play it. And. Yeah. We fucked off on that game, and I'm it's, kind of bummed. You know, we, we Keith and I have talked about this a lot. When you when you when you're here and you're you know representing a podcast or well, essentially you're here representing the press, right? It's tough juggling. You know, we're going to go play games and we're going to go you know press the palms as the press. We're going to meet people, yeah. talk to people, you know, about their games and whatnot. And it's a hard juggle. And sometimes you know you want to come here and have fun and play games, but really you're here to do other things we're here to work you know technically speaking yeah. so so we had to make some hard decisions uh some of our friends went to roseville beach um when we do a recap on the actual podcast maybe we'll have one of them on to talk about it yep uh but uh but uh, note that the creator was there actually running the game yeah. so it was you know it's, that makes it all the more wor <laughs> the worse for me yeah I, I really wanted to play but but we but but we did accomplish a few things after we went on our uh, uh, five mile hike around yeah. all. Well, I think we visited every what sky ramp and all of Gen so Con. So I think we walked every skywalk in Gen Con in, around in downtown Indianapolis, uh, hunting well, for a, for a dear friend of ours. We won't name you. Uh, who antagonized us two years ago for not visiting them, um, doing the thing that they do. We know who you are. Um, we're not naming names, mm -hmm. and so we. We were told, they told us where they were going to be, so we went to that hotel. Mm -hmm. um, Mind you, they told us where they were going to be. This was the, this was the night of Pendragon. They showed up uh, late to say hello. They were tired. We were drinking. They were asleep on the sofa. Yeah. And so, so things, signals, communication got screwed up. We went to the hotel that they told us they were going to be at. There was no such thing happening at no. that hotel. No. So we figured, finally figured out where they were going to be. We had to traipse all the way across downtown Indianapolis via the skywalks again, thankfully. 90% yeah. of, of the walk was skywalk. To find them at the hotel they were at mm -hmm. and got a big old bear hug. Yeah. And we, we chided them, they chided us. Yeah. And then we found a bar. Then we found a <laughs> The only bar in downtown Indianapolis. Indianapolis. In a hotel that was open at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Indianapolis. Uh, you need to open your bar, your bars earlier during restaurant, the restaurant, uh, hotel bars. Yes, hotels. I mean, for fuck's sake, you know. I mean, we went to like the Embassy Suites. Their bar wasn't open. Three we or four to bars. Hyatt, the bar was three open. or four bars. It's yeah, just like it was and, crazy. <clears throat> and mind you, um, for those who aren't familiar with the weather here, it is very hot and very humid. 
Uh, this one over here is maybe a little used to humidity. No, I'm, I'm SoCal. It's, it's got to be a dry heat. It's got to be a nice, you know, ocean breeze. The moment uh, it goes above 5% humidity, I crumble like a stack of cards. So it was, it was, a, it was a long trek. So we, we found him. It was good to see him. And then we made our way down to the, uh, the, the bowels of the, uh, another uh, hotel, and we yeah, picked so up we, something. We went to, God. Crown I, Plaza. Crown Plaza. There's two Crown Plaza side by side, mm -hmm. slightly different named uh, sister <clears throat> properties. And we went to, was it Eden Studios? No, Edge. Edge Studios, my yes. bad. They're, they're doing the new uh, um, uh, Arkham. Arkham Horror, don't you have it right Ar behind us on the table? Arkham, I, I'm bending over to because it feels <laughs> I'm good. Short. Yeah, I, I'm short. I've been standing gotta, all day. I'm leaning over, and yeah. it feels so good. It, and for me to get that, so I have to get the move. So we went to Edge move. Studios, and they're doing the new Arkham Horror role-playing game based off of... The card game. Card game. Based off of... Everything else. The 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 board game. <laughs> the board game based which off is of Lovecraftian stuff. Based, based off, off of Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah. yeah. So you know we all know how that chain of uh, yeah evidence, as it were, goes. So we went and checked out their headquarters at the the bottles of that hotel, which yes. was kind of appropriate. Nice, ni nice, nice. Uh, uh, group of people, though. They Absolutely. were very welcoming. Very, yep. very nice. Um, and, uh, definitely want to take a look at the game and, you know, one of the people, uh, one of the many people that, that we met that would be good to have on for a chat. Yeah. So, so hopefully we can make that happen in the near future. Yeah. They were super inviting to talk at, at the show and tell us about the, the current product and what's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. And we were able to pick up, we all actually, everybody here in the house got copies. We yeah. all picked up copies. And then from there... Uh, a few hours later, we went to we did the Ennies. Yes. So big, yeah, so big we, night. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. So um, so uh, Scott Woodard, who is the uh, the the creator and author, or uh, I'll say creator and author. I know other people contributed to it, but you know it's it's his it's his baby. Um, you know, came out here to um, as one of the uh, nom nominees for yep. um, for the Ennies, uh, best family game. Yeah. And originally he wasn't going to come. Uh, but uh, he definitely um, he, he found out you know that he was nominated and by a lot of good graces he was able to come here and then once he told us it's like well we're there we're there to support you yep so so Scott was one friend that was that was nominated that night and we had another friend Alex Giat, yep who who was up for best uh, community content for his uh, Lost Wolves of Carcosa uh, yeah but it, oh my god it's a two part title and I'm drawing a blank but it's Right. Something Lost Wolves of Carcosa. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> My bad again. Did he edit this thing, Alex? No, I did not edit. That's why he, he if he doesn't get paid to edit it, he has no fucking clue what the game is. Uh, you know. Um. So anyway, so they were both up. And lost hobos. Lost, lost, lost. Lost hobos. Lost, the lost wolves of Carcosa. Lost, lost, lost Carcosa's hobos. Anyways, so Annie's, right? Meh. It was, it was, and of course, the Annie's ended up. We met everyone else, you know, here at, um, you know, the uh, the cottage. Hi, Neve. Um, and um, you know, so it was, it was. Uh, we had some drinks and spoke with many other wonderful people there. Oh, yeah. it, it's definitely a, a schmooze event, um, and they had a um, a silent auction for a lot of games. So we we you know we took a look at what they had to offer. They had a, a there was, there was some ups and downs with the silent auction. Yeah, but they oh, oh no, I just add one more thing. They yeah, they also had a, a couple bins of like you know um, you know games that they had for yeah. sale. They were going to I I got pretty much almost the entire set of uh, nations and cannons. Yeah, uh, for for ten bucks. Yep. Yeah, you got the core book, a little supplement, and the card pack for like ten for a tenner. Yeah. So, um, so, anyways, we're we're all settling in. We we were all applying ourselves with drinks. Yes, we know, were <laughs> ch ch chit chatting. You know, being you know sociable people. And the wonderful thing is, okay, so I'm just gonna add a little thing there. There's two types of people that come to the Indies. There's those who are or are, are a are nominated, so they've gone home and got ready, and and you know they look fabulous. And B people who ended their day early, went home, cleaned themselves up, and looked fabulous. Then there's those who have been wandering all fucking day or just finished the game 30 minutes wait, wait, earlier. Wait, you mean us? Yeah, us and other people. Um, and they're rushing to this this awards event and we, we look like we, you know, just we look like slobs. Yeah, we just we just got, you know, we just got off work. Yeah. So there there's a nice mix of that. And so we we lessons were lessons learned. Were 
Yeah. Lessons learned next year or next time we come to Gen Con. Yeah, don't, don't book a game or do something yeah. an hour or two no. before. So uh, we got there, smooth, talked to a lot of wonderful people, sat down for the, the event. Yeah. And so some, some great things happened, some sad things happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about the great things that happened. Um, sure. So it, for our friend Alex, mm-hmm. uh, he took home gold it, for his um, Los Hobos. Yep. The Lost Wolves of Carcosa. I know I'm saying it right this time. I swear I am. Uh, so congratulations, Alex. I think I might have been. I hope I was the first one that messaged him from the from the NES. Congratulations. I may not have been. No, oh, Bud was, and I was second. You were third. Uh, go fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, congrats to Alex and everybody else that contributed to that book. I mean, it's amazing work. It's amazing to see community content folks being recognized yes. for the great things that they do. Yes. Um, it's about damn time. Yes. And Caleb Stokes, uh, who mm-hmm. worked on God's Teeth for Arc Dream Publishing. Yes. He took home a gold as well. That was great. So that was amazing. I think yeah. this is the second or third year in a row that Arc Dream has pulled golds for various products that in, you're, in you're, various categories. You so this might is, be right. This is nice to see that there's it's a continuing trend for them. Yeah. Um, another great takeaway from the Ennies. Uh, I won an auction, or I won one of the lots in the silent auction. I won a stack of RuneQuest books mm-hmm. for like pennies on the dollar. Oh God, he he got he got all of the uh, mythology books for like nothing. I got all of the mythology books and the arms and equipment guide, and the Red Book of Magic, and two community content books uh, for literally pennies on the dollar. So yes. it was great. Yeah. Um, now some of the, some of the sad moments, um, yeah. our, our good friend who Scott Woodard, who's been on the show before, mm-hmm. he did not win in his category and no. that was an absolute kick below the belt. Yeah. Uh, for what he was in his category, those things that he was competing against, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know why personally, I don't know why his game was in the category that for, it was in for best Family, family game, yeah. Not, and like, that, like traditionally, I know we talked about this on the episode that we did, kind of pre Ennies. Yes, when we spoke about our our predictions, yeah. Right, where in the past those have been games that are like geared towards like the under twelve crowd, right? The and, the My Little Ponies and and, the, and like the the Tickle Me Kobolds and the, you know yeah. those kind of silly games and yeah. stuff that you can introduce to your you know fledgling kids that are getting into the hobby, which right. are great things. Right. But I don't know why that was geared. You know that was that category, but it it is what it is, mm-hmm. and um, he didn't win silver or gold, and it was it was yeah. an absolute kick in the belt. Yeah, and so Scott, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you didn't win, and I think you should have. You the Pine Box Middle School was too good for that category. It, it was yeah. absolutely was. It should have been in the long form. Yeah, category, long form adventure category, or something. It should have been in a different category. Yeah. Personally, I don't know who makes those decisions, or yeah. if the company when they submitted it, right, submitted it for Smiths for a specific category. I believe that's how it works. Yeah, maybe they picked the wrong category. I don't know. But that being said, if you're a parent and you're looking for a good RPG to introduce to your family yeah. or kids, go buy it. It's, yeah, it's far better than all the other ones. Without without question. In our opinion, yes. Yeah. So. But yeah. Um, so. And there was one other. Um, Sad moment in the in the Annies. Mm-hmm. Um, a friend of ours um, bid on an auction. <laughs> <laughs> won the auction. Do we want to say it? Um, I'm not naming names. Well, I mean, he's right in the next. It doesn't fucking matter. Room. It doesn't matter. He won the you auction. Sure. Yep. Okay. And he got he got a great deal on a a, a metric ton of Savage Worlds box sets. I'm being quiet so he doesn't come in and kill me. Um, and he doesn't watch this. I know. <laughs> But his wife does. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> She'll pat me on the back. Um, he won a ton. Yeah. And it, he got it for a steal. He did. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh God, was, yeah. So the so the silent auction was was actually really good. I put a couple bids down for a few things. I got outbidded. There was a wonderful set of Chaosium books with yeah. with a, with a couple um, Pelgrane Press books or one. Hold on. A, I think. Hold on. Yeah. I think we need to back this up. So for listeners oh. that don't know, the way the auction works is. Okay. Every all the auction, all the money's raised for the auction go to charity. Yes. So that's, oh yeah, go ahead. That's the primary thing that's happening but, with the auction. But what are these books? Today? So these are all the books that are donated, not not donated, are submitted for 
the the judges to to consider for for the Ennies for their various categories. Yeah. Um, I know some of the books in the lot that I won were not contributed or were not uh, submitted this year. They were from last year's submission, so right. th they were probably um, they per were were not either sold at the auction in those bins that Scott was talking about earlier or in an auction lot last year. Right. So they were held over and not sold else elsewhere for charity to raise the charity funds. So they were uh, grouped with um, various auction lots this year, in my yeah. case, the RuneQuest books. Yeah. Um, from this year and last year were lumped together and made up the lot for this year. Yeah. So um, that's where those books come from. Right. Um, so, but some amazing, some amazing bundles of stuff and some amazing deals were. There happening. was, but there, there, there's also a bit of a, oh, how should I put it, a, a bit of a, a cornucopia uh, of, of books that are stacked together. So you might yeah. see something that you really, really want, but you may get five or six books that you're like, eh. So it, it you, most of the bids start at like fifty or seventy-five bucks. Yeah, I would say between which is a good deal. Fifty and a hundred dollars was kind of you, the starting. You range. could get a stack of, of anywhere from five to eight books or more. Yeah, you know, um, uh, some four hundred pages, some two hundred pages, some eighty pages. So definitely, all of them are a good deal. Yeah, but the big thing is, is like if you wanted all the books in a stack, like the chaos and one was yeah. all. Was either all chaos team or Call of Cthulhu stuff? There, there was, was there was so in the just for an example, the starting bid was a hundred dollars, right? And it was the it was the first edition uh, copy of the first edition box set, the, the deep one, yeah, yeah, uh, the the the, uh, the one that they reprinted, two inch one, yeah. Yep. Um, there, time it, of Harvest, Time of Harvest, um, the Arkham book, uh, the Cults of Cthulhu book. The um, Miskatonic uh, Repository uh, Japan. Yep. I don't know the full name. Yeah. Um, and then there was. Did you say Arkham? I did say yeah, Arkham. Like Alone Against the Static. Yes. And then Fearful Symmetries for Trail of Cthulhu. Yeah. And two sets of dice. Two sets of dice and some other kind of Cthulhu y stuff. Thrown. Yeah, a couple little things. And a starting bid was $100. Right. And that's easily over 300 bucks of stuff. Three to $400 right. worth of stuff. So. But there was another thing where it was like. I was interested in a particular book. One stack had uh, a, you know, the the old um, Paladin book. Yep. Uh, the the it was Paladin, the Charlemagne book for it, the supplement book right. for it. But there was, and, and again, I don't want to embarrass the other books, but there was four or five other books. Hey, Die was in there. I wanted that one. I just said I didn't want to embarrass the wow. other. Wow. Uh, anyways, uh, so there were there were there were other books in there that were mixed in, like good books, but I would have bid seventy five. For it to get that particular book, but that one went for crazy money right at the end. So right, so yeah, it's so anyways, anyways. Good things yeah. were good things were had at the at the auction. Great things, you know. Uh, great people won great awards last mm -hmm. night. And but when when it was over, everyone there was a vote, and everyone said it's time to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. So we we left. we left and went home. So this was this was essentially a third night in a row where it was a late night. Oh yeah. A, you know, we're, we, none of us... I don't us think we got back to the house till midnight. Right, so... And then it was... Three nights in a row, I think most of us... Most of us weren't in bed before 1 a.m. For three, one or three nights in a row. So, with that... Then was today. Then was today, when the alarms went off again. At 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, well, 5, because I had to do laundry. Yeah. So uh, today, we all started with uh, a game on the Lucas Oil Stadium field in mm -hmm. the... In the Goodman Games yep. corral. Yep, yep. With our friend who? Brendan LaSalle. That's yeah, right. That's... We did a little sign of the Southern Cross at the sh at the good old Shutter Mountains. Reason for the season. This, this, and you know, it goes without saying. Most people who either watch me, listen to the show, know I'm a big DCC fan. As am I. And a few years ago, well, I should say a few years ago, but last Gen Con, uh, two Gen Cons ago, we were supposed to have a game with Brendan in the van. Unfortunately, Brendan, ha Brendan had a family emergency, so it got canceled. Um, so we've been looking to get everyone together for a game with Brendan again. We got it this time, and it was well worth it was you know, amazing it was well worth the wait it yeah. was amazing brendan you know you play with brendan you know he's 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 a uh, he's a hurricane a force of energy yeah and it was fantastic and you know in in we although he ran a good game we totally screwed it at the end with him i mean he he fumbled twice in a row with the big bad guy 
Oh, yeah. it, it was glorious. We we had a good old time. And I rolled some great crits. And the adventure that ran was, it looked like one that he was running, or either writing or in the process of, of doing for uh, the Shutter Mountain campaign setting. Yeah. So, um, so good times. And it's always fun on the DCC campaign floor, or DCC uh, Lucas Oil floor, floor, because everyone there is awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just good times. If you, ha if you get a moment to get to a Gen Con, and you can probably tell I've been drinking. If you get a moment to be to get to Gen Con, I'm starting all, all over my words. Um, and if you're not a fan of DC, DCC, go play a few games. You'll walk away. You'll be a fan. It's just yeah, they they they're volunteer judges at, at their convention that the conventions that they are have a big presence at are all yes, amazing folks, big personalities. Uh, so. When we did X Crawl tournament on Thursday, our first judge Joey Joey, Royale. Joey Royale, amazing. High speed, low drag, great personality. I mean, it's just been amazing. Snappy, oh you yeah, know, humor, witty, comments. yeah, and and all of them were. All of them, yep. all of them are dedicated. They love the game, and that's Passionate. why they're there. And that's that's what that's what this gaming community is right. all about. So we we started today with a bang. It was yep. great, and uh, then I continued with a bang. I mean, we we kind of split up from there. Yeah, um, I had to go find. I, my goal after the game, between games today, mm -hmm. was to go find something, a gift for my granddaughter, take take something home for her, yep. and go visit a couple of um, publishers, do some schmoozing, mm -hmm. and then um, and then I eventually met up with everybody again to, yeah. to play a game this afternoon, which was a kind of our wrap up, our cap for the mm -hmm. day. So um, so myself, we. Uh... Um, I went to and hung out with some of my other friends here at the house. They really did, they were kind of like in a holding pattern. Uh, everyone kind of had something to do, do in the afternoon, so we kind of hung out for a little bit. Um, I eventually made my way back to Crown Royale because yeah, the Arkham um, uh, Arkham Horror RPG FOMO was true, so we had to go pick. I went and picked up another copy for Debbie, and then we all met up after that. You know what that hotel is called? It's the Crown Plaza, not the Crown Royale. It should be called the Crown fucking Sauna, because for fuck's sake. They have, they, they have a giant skylight in that thing, and they have AC running. Walking through that thing... You, you, you... But they have trains. <sighs> but they have train cars it's in It's hot them. as fuck in that Which, are, which have place. rooms in it, people. They, it they is, have train cars in there. It is hotter, in it. It is awesome. hotter in that room than it is outside. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. So... So yes, and uh, and Bud, Bud went back to uh, have a. I won't reveal it yet, but Bud went back to the house to have an interview uh, with a particular wonderful someone. So well, well, when when that comes out, we'll let Bud reveal it. But yeah. uh, so, uh, but eventually we we regrouped and we went to go to the uh, Artel Sorian room and we went to go play our your first right, my first yeah 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 of uh, Castle Falkenstein, <clears throat> and. When we when we got there, we were both kind of running on just zero, a, empty. zero. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, again, this is a giant con. It may not sound like we did much, but just the simple fact of like I just went to the vendor hall to go look for something, that could be an hour and a half and eighty. Hell, walking to the bathroom yeah. is like a thirty minute. 80, you know, adventure and eighty thousand steps. I mean, yeah. it's just it's it's crazy here. It's this bananas. is this is this is. The biggest con in the world. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so so we got there. We you know we we're running on empty. We we're all kind of trying to catch up. But I will say that um, I know you you probably know his name. Uh, oh, the game master. Yes, his his name is Jay Gray. He is the PR line guy, promoter -y guy for the Cyberpunk Red product line. Okay, yeah, but. Fantastic job. He yeah. picked everybody up um, and just brought us in. You know, once once I stopped sweating from all the heat and kind of and cooled down. <laughs> uh, but uh, he he chock full of personality. Yeah. Uh, explained the game perfectly for people who who never played it. Um, Castle Falkenstein uses cards um, instead of dice and uh, uses a uh, a suit numeric system. Yeah. Kind of like poker. Kind of. It, yeah. It's kind of a it, you know a mix and match. You're trying to match a suit and a, and a, and a color and and a number value associated with it. 
Yeah. But ultimately, your goal is with with these cards, you're, you're looking to match a particular color for the skill that's associated with the, that you know with that skill. Yep. The number value, and you're trying to get over a number that a only, target value. A target value. Yeah. Yep. So it's you know it's another method for you know resolution. But he ran a fantastic scenario, a great scenario that concluded perfectly in just under two hours. Two hours, yep. walked away satisfied. It was fantastic. Yep. And he did a great job and walked away knowing the game for yep. for how it was presented. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask for more with, with yep. someone who's promoting the game for that. Yep. And, you know, and so popped over, got my, my son a copy of the new uh, Cyberpunk. Um, what is it, Edge Runner? Edge Runner, yeah, 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 which is you know the their new box set based on the video game, so to speak. Um, you know, he's going through it, or he went through it after we went home, and I think I think that wrapped up our day because after you bought yeah, that, yeah, we all made a beeline to the parking garage, put our asses in the air conditioning in the car, and we called it early today. We yeah. were home by like shortly after five, so yeah. that's Ooh. that's why we don't have a lot to report on today. But still, it felt like a long fucking yeah. day. Tomorrow we've all got one game. A group of us are going. We all have a game at ten. Yeah. A group of us has one game. Mm -hmm. Rap uh, Scallion. You guys are doing Rap Scallion. Mm -hmm. Pookie and I are supposed to do Cartel at ten. You guys have Rap Scallion at ten. Yeah. Bud has a different game. So you and Debbie have Rap Scallion. Yeah. Pookie and I have Cartel, and Bud I think has Rune Quest tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And that is, and then some last minute last vendor minute hall stuff. Picks pick up some purchases. And, and then, that's it. And oh well, no, we then we go meet with uh, some some friends uh, uh, yeah. uh, for for dinner tomorrow night before we uh, call it a convention. So yeah, um, so we we won't be doing another wrap up uh, for tomorrow because we'll all be going home bright and early the day after that. Yeah, Monday morning. Yeah. My little fat ass is headed into a tropical storm mm -hmm. and <laughs> driving back to South Carolina in a tropical storm. And 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 my tall fat ass <laughs> is is heading to Kentucky to pick up my dad, and then my dad and my son are going to be spending three days driving home back to California, and then it's back to life as we know it. So, yeah. so that's pretty much that's. I, I think this is going to be our last wrap up for this event yeah. until we do the next official episode. Yeah. So so there you go. That's 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 the life of a. Mediocre YouTuber at Gen Con. <laughs> YouTuber, podcaster, po yeah, yeah, we're, blogger. Yeah, we're, 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 we are all of those things. Yeah. But uh, but I think the biggest takeaway is uh, out of everything was is even though we, we had such a um, just a chaotic schedule, we met a lot of good people that once we kind of get back to reality and settle down, we've got a, a lot of wonderful people we have new contacts with. Uh, a lot of new creators and people within, uh, you know, the role-playing game world yep. to speak to, have on the podcast, talk about. Promote. We have a lot to unpack. But uh, but but uh, Keith and I have talked about it. You know, it, uh, if we go to another convention, let's say hypothetically we go to Origins or Game Hole Con, I think next time it's going to be it's going to be no games and purely just pressing the flesh, and we're here for business. Yeah. Or it's going to be all games, right. and, and we're not going to do anything any work. any work press stuff so mixing it is is, is bananas is bananas you know lessons you, learned you always feel, you always feel like you're chasing your tail yeah yeah fact. so so anyways with that i think yep. we should roll on yep. out of here signing off from the cottage the cottage yeah ta ta neve go get a spot of tea T -T -T -F -N. i think i'll go get a spot of tea before we go to uh uh take the lift up, oh, up, up, up to the flat oh. and, and, and have a sit before we go to bed. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>